2017 was a wonderful year, but I can't wait for 2018. I have so many exciting projects to show you, but for now, let's celebrate with fireworks. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. I thought I'd celebrate with a gorgeous fireworks painting. So this is fun. I'm painting on twin rocker paper, a hot press paper, cold press. You probably don't want to do rough press paper for this would be perfect. I'm using a really huge brush. So use the biggest round brush that you own. So right now I'm going in and I've put masking on the paper to reserve it. And um, it's not, so anywhere I've put masking, check out the masking video for how to use it, will stay white. And here's the sped up. And I want this a little bit dull there. So I'm gonna let that dry completely. And now I'm adding the ultramarine blue. So I'm starting with a very cool blue for the background and I am just scrubbing it around the paper. You can see fit a lot of arm action and I'm really, really moving with this. So here's the sped up. I'm adding just touches of cobalt violet just to cool it down even a little bit more because I want those fireworks to look like they are on fire against the dark sky. I love the little streamers that go down too. That's really fun. So I'm using mar maroon Perlin for this. And I'm just looking for a very, very strong dark back there. And if you add red, you get a stronger dark. A lot of contrast. So I'm going into it again and again, and I'm laying it dry in between layers, or at least the next layer, I let it dry. And it's going to take a couple washes to get a really strong, dark night sky. I don't want to use black because once I use black, I don't have that depth of color. It becomes very, very flat. But I am using a fairly flat, many, many washes, many layers of color. So, there's a subtle difference in it, but um, black paint would, it would just make it look dull. So this is really good practice if you want some strong, bold darks in your paintings, because it takes a lot of washes and a lot of layers, and you're going to know how to paint strong darks at the end of this. And while most paintings are night scenes and everything about it isn't night and dark and black and all that, it, you still need to use touches of very strong darks in most paintings. Not all, but most. And this is really good practice. So keep at it and at the end of it, you will know just how many washes it takes to get strong, bold darks that are still very transparent or translucent at least. Because I'm not looking for opaque color, I'm looking for a glowing night sky. So I'm going in here, remember fireworks, they're like balls of fire, right? And so each one of them is a shape and I need to go in and do those edges. And remember, I'm using some masking. You don't have to use masking on this because I do use some wax and I do use some gouache later on in the piece. But I personally like the play of all of those together in something like this where there's all kinds of light. And so I'm going in with very jagged strokes and I am shaping those balls, but very jagged on the edges. Okay, it's dried completely. Looks really dark, but look how much darker we can make it if we try. Huge brush. Oh, um, this is a 16 by 20. So that tells you about the scale of it. Notice I'm still using all that masking. And I'm really going in there. I'm getting a lot of paint on the paper, but there is enough water on there where it's going to look transparent. The light is going to hit the paper and bounce back through the pigment and it is going to glow with color. All right, so now I'm starting to get a little bit of detail in here and I'm using my um, size six brush 
Still the squirrel, still kind of sloppy strokes, moving all over the place, lots of energy in here. And I'm throwing in a little bit of cobalt teal and adding a couple more colors in the mix. So a little bit slower, not quite as much, but I'm still moving pretty fast and I'm still not worrying about the detail, more the great big ball shapes of the fireworks. I absolutely love fireworks there. So they're fun to paint. I painted them a couple times, but they're really fun to watch too. So I love the cobalt teal against the really dark sky. That's, that's a really nice effect. You know, because they, they have the smoke that comes down in the mist and it just kind of sizzles as it goes. So it's, it's not just the main ball of the fireworks and explosion there. There's the smoke from the explosion. It's kind of lighting up the sky around it. So I am still have the masking on, at least some of it, and I'm just working around that. Using some Nicolazzo yellow in here. Cobalt teal, and I'm really letting the colors run together just like they do in a real firework. Everything flows and goes together. Okay, now I've taken off most of the masking here, and you can see what a difference it makes. So you lose some of the stuff that you've already done, and it is your choice. You know, you can use masking or you can um, just use white gouache or anything you want. I'm painting with cadmium red here. Cadmium is usually a very opaque pigment. And so I'm doing some little cadmium red there. And I can just do that directly in maybe two layers on the dark of the sky because it's going to show up. It doesn't really matter whether it's painted, um, it's white or not beforehand, since it's an opaque pigment. And you should know which of your pigments are opaque and which are translucent, or in which are transparent completely. Okay, so I'm switching back now that I'm not doing the itty bitty things. And I'm pulling out some of these, the balls of the smoke and flames. And I am shaping them just like clouds. You know, you shape a cloud, and, but the light is coming from different directions than it would normally come from because the light is from the actual firework explosion and it reflects on the smoke of the explosion. So that's kind of fun. I use a lot of cadmium red in this. Lots of energy and, and warm colors. leading in some cobalt teal. This is a really fun painting to paint. Even if, if you just kind of like fireworks, this is great practice for the darks. It's great practice for just loosening up because there is no definite shape for this. This is just fun to play with. So when you're in a mood to just play with the paint, this is your painting. Because it really doesn't matter. So I'm carving out some of the, the individual explosion areas there, but I'm staying with the round balls. Some cobalt teal. And I'm starting to switch up with brushes a lot. A little bit of spray of water to have it flow a little bit on the dry um, background. So I'm really having fun playing with this. OK, 
Okay, see how I'm carving around those individual ball shapes of the explosion? And I'm just doing some negative painting. Don't get all worried because we're using gouache on this later. So, and it's, you know, it's a giant explosion. It doesn't matter. This is a good place to practice negative painting because it really doesn't matter. It's not like it's someone's face or a piece of architecture. It's, it's much more fluid and drawing matters much less on this. So play with the negative painting and just let those colors flow together and, and, um, be your fireworks there. This is definitely a painting that I couldn't do another one exactly like it. If I tried, I could do another in the same series. Probably will, because it was really fun. But, you know, it's there's a lot of free-flowing in here. So speeding it up a little, I want some darks. And those are really to define the edges of the individual ball shapes. You remember, they are balls. They're not circles. They're not flat. They're balls of fire. And all the little things are going out just like um, a flower in all directions, like a, a dahlia or something like that. Okay, I've decided I need it a little bit darker. So one more wash in the background. And you don't know until the end whether you need it darker or not. I'm still using the same colors, but they get darker on every, every layer. So I'm loosely going around those edges. Sped up. And the thing is, if you do the background and the foreground at the same time, it's trickier because you don't want to make a big muddy mess. You want to leave some areas defined, but you do want those flowing edges. So I definitely think in this painting, it's nice to do like the last little layer of background at the same time as the touching up, finishing, finishing touches on the fireworks on your subject. And I'm really wanting those, the smoke, you know, falling that's lit by the fireworks. I have a little wax there on the, um, the rockets, the streaming rockets. And, um, so I have wax in just a couple of the areas. I don't have too much, but I want a little bit of the hit and miss effect, the textured effect. And then a little bit more of the smoke in there and the light hitting the smoke. And I'm still using those jagged strokes, very jagged, very loose strokes. This is seriously one of the most fun paintings that you will ever paint. Just get some good reference photos and play with the paint. Tiny bit more spritzing because it dries out quickly. Most paintings, I want it to dry out quickly, but here I'm really wanting to work with it together. Quite wet. Wanting it to flow more. And that'll give me a little bit of the orangey tones, especially since I put some cadmium in those areas earlier. This is very much about many, many layers. In knowing opaque, transparent, what's my paint? What's it going to do? How's it going to flow? I hope this inspires you to paint your own gorgeous fireworks. Thank you very much for watching. 
and this is going to be the best new year ever. I've got some great paintings coming up and a lot of them are fun. Most of them are, I've tried to edge towards the very quick and easy and fun to do. So happy new year, enjoy the fireworks and please paint your own. Please visit my website at paintingwatercolor.com for the full um, art supplies and reference photo. Happy painting!